Hello? Hey. There's that voice. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Hey, is this Dale J. Gordon? Is this the Chris Brake Show? Yes. Why are you doing that stupid voice? Hey, <laughs> we haven't talked to you in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Now, that's the voice I like. That's Dale. <laughs> yes, what's going on? I'm still working on my Chris break. Oh, I can't wait to hear it. Actually, I hate that shit. Yeah, that was that. That was a leaning towards it. That's it's not perfected yet. I knew. And you got to get in line, man. You got to get in line. Just line. I knew a guy that used to do a Chris break, and it was like, it went something like, uh, "It's Chris break. It's Chris break. Want to smoke a bowl? I'm Chris <laughs> break." Yep, 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 yep. Jeez. Yeah, it was pretty offensive. I think yuck, he was. Yuck. I don't know what he was what he was doing, but it was pretty bad. So what? You're, What's happening over there? And I'm sitting here with John Rapp and Brian, and you are no longer in uh, Trenton, New Jersey. You are a man. That's of right. Nashville, Tennessee. That's right. Nashville recording artist. Nashville so recording I have yet artist. Step foot in a studio. I got this little handy dandy digital recorder. I carry around the beat up gold can of tobacco, uh, drum tobacco. Yeah. yeah. Can you waterproof it? Wrap it in a couple sandwich bags and. Uh, <laughs> you just reminded me. In there with my spare change. <laughs> can you? Can you tell us about, uh, or at least tell John and Brian about that fucking dude? Because uh, you. Oh, like, the bum. The bum. Like you're in a situation right now. You're in a weird situation where you moved, and you, now you're you're in between places. Yeah. Which means. Well, I'm in, well, I'm in between places, man. <laughs> Right now, I'm in between uh, uh, jobs, girlfriends, and haircuts, and uh, houses you know, at the moment. Yeah, which basically means you're sleeping under a bridge. Ooh. Yeah, that, long and short of it, long and short of it. Which is insane. So whenever you right? find yourself looking for these different places, you know, each night, you know, you can't, you can't necessarily stay in the same place every night because another hobo will find it, you know, and... Uh, there was this one bridge that I was looking at, an under, you know, an overpass, and I thought, well, that looks like it'll keep me dry if it rains, and it's, you know, it's off and away. And I found out real quick why. No, you know, and I go up there and start crawling up the hill, you know, and then I see no other bums. It's like, <laughs> and I look, and I'm like, what's wrong with this place? And then I notice that it's just covered in pigeon shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, like bombed out, just white and brown, white brown, white brown. And right about the time I noticed that, a bunch of pigeons go, whoo, 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 and they fly out of the ceiling of the goddamn thing and pooped everywhere. And so I couldn't sleep there that night, so I kept moving, you know, and I had a, a one tall can of yin yin beer, and I was wanting to sit down and have that before bedtime. <laughs> bedtime. And so <laughs> I had skirt, scooted on down the street or whatever, and I found this big, long alley, and it was dark and all, and it had been raining all day, so it was dripping like... You know, it was right out of a comic book, you know, seeing how Batman, somebody gets jumped. And uh, I start walking down this deep uh, alley that's got like a eight to ten foot tall brick wall of housing in four or five garage fronts, which are all black and out of street light uh, view. And I walk by and I see that there is a man figure, dark figure, setting and just lighting a cigarette. And I hear the, the click of the lighter and, and the, the glow glows up nice and orange. And he's obviously setting on what looks to be like a throne of luggage and shopping carts and all that stuff. Like, that's his domain. What his face So I like? just kind of keep, I couldn't see his face. Just saw the glow of the cigarette. So I walk by that and go down two more garage fronts and plop down and uh, tap the top of my, uh, you know, beer can to get the foam to not jump out. And I crack it, and I say, I want to sit here and have this beer, and I start rolling me a cigarette. And uh, I start rolling a cigarette, and he starts doing the whole, oh, I got you, motherfucker. <laughs> I was like, okay, here's another homeless guy that talks to himself. That's cool. <laughs> oh, my God. And, um, That's terrifying. Having not, you know, got, That's having not, not gotten, uh, like, uh, you know, to, to hang out with ladies down here and seeing all these girls in mini skirts and cowgirl boots by the droves just plowing by, you know, a man can get frustrated and whatnot. And being homeless, you know, there's, I have not much allure to them. You know, you want to come sleep on the slab with me, baby. <laughs> so the next thing he has to say, I related to, because he goes, well, oh, look at the ass on that one. And I think, oh, he's like replaying all the pretty girls walking by, and he's like, oh, I can't have some. And uh, and then 
He goes, look at that, pretty nice ass on that one. Who knows, maybe later I'll fuck it. And then <laughs> he's talking about I you. realize that he's directing <laughs> all this at me, out loud. <laughs> and then he goes, then he proceeds to say, yeah, that's right. I'll give you ten minutes, and then you better get the fuck out of my house. And he called me the N-word. Because I guess you can only see a poof of my hair, you know. Mm. <laughs> he called you the N-word. And so right then, when he said, when, when he said, uh, pretty nice ass on that one, who knows, maybe I'll fuck it. I felt like, like just completely objectified. Like, he is just a dirty-ass <laughs> bum with every disease in the world, and he wants to shank my pants down around my ankles and fuck me until he comes in my asshole. Like, I picture myself... Uh, you know, New Jersey man found dead in alley with uh, homeless semen dripping out of ass with blood. <laughs> and least... I'm thinking, this is not ha what I had in mind. So I stopped rolling my cigarette right then and there, and uh, I put the stuff away, and I get up and uh, carry my beer, you know, carefully right past him. And then he just kept on going with this, like, the goddamn like slowed down lawnmower sounding voice I've never heard anything <laughs> like it it was big and belly I have a recording of it I'll be happy to send it to you sometime soon okay. and uh what was the next thing he said I, oh okay I, 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 since I'm replaying it I guess I could use the racial slur. but uh he said I can't believe there's a nigger in my house <laughs> how did a nigger get in my house you know, I'm thinking, oh, God, this guy, he thinks I'm half black or something. This is Tennessee. He's going to, maybe a whole pack of them are going to jump out and get me. So I walk by him, and then he starts going off about something called a banana coffee. Now, the only thing I can picture this is, is like a really old racist term like that you would only hear inside of a prison cell in Tennessee, Kentucky, or Alabama in probably 1941 or two. It's probably outdated, no longer used, but it has some connotation and connection to uh, the bl uh, black race being monkey-like and whatnot. And he said, he had a banana coffee. I never had a banana coffee. And then he started about screaming how much he wanted a banana coffee, but it was all like in jest, and he was being sarcastic. Like, he was just like, I never had a banana coffee. So your ass you was know, his banana stuff. coffee that he wanted to taste? Maybe, 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 man. <laughs> Who knows? But I did it right out of there. And uh, <laughs> not to mention that that was, that was right right about the time that I'd gotten a case of what they call the chiggers. These are like uh, packs of these little bugs that you can't see that bite the living shit out of your, <laughs> your legs and go all the way up and through the, your crevices of your butt and and uh, oh, leave giant blisters, and then the blisters get infected because you're walking around in 100-degree uh, humid heat, and then you got to go to the hospital get two different types of antibiotics and refrain from drinks for the rest of the time, even though you're on the street and getting drunk is part of being homeless. But I've actually refrained quite well from any of that, having one or two little beers, and not even nightly, because I don't want to be susceptible to something like that, you know what I mean? If Imagine if I was like putting away bottles of whiskey, and then the, that guy found me laying out in the open. How that might end. At least to confirm the quality of your ass. <laughs> yeah, you know, I gotta think that's the best compliment I've gotten <laughs> since I've been down here, and the most attention I must speak uh, say also. But that's just a little anecdote. Now you've caught me in the middle of the second job because it's a hustle bustle, and I got to make loot to get to stay afloat. You know, and so money has become uh, oxygen in the United States of America. Good luck without it. So I'm going to do this for a while. Burn both ends of the candle. Run on two and a half, three, four top dollars of sleep, and uh, continue to just keep moving. Because I've found that if I do have a large chunk of sleep, and I'm at one job or the other, and doing this and that, I stop every once in a while and actually think about what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> and I can't afford to do that. But if I just go on two or three hours of sleep, I just wake up, go, do it, do it, go, do it, do it. <laughs> well, the know, crazy thing is, is uh, you may be homeless. But it's not like like you're working. Like you got you had a job transfer. You had a job when you left. You had a job waiting for you when you moved there. Uh, That's now, right. You now have a second job. You got money saved up. You you, you fucking right. you're eating. You you only drink maybe a beer or two a night. You're not doing drugs. Like you're That's <laughs> you're, right. you're not fucking shit up. You just haven't found a place yet, and you have no problem sleeping under a bridge and bathing in the fucking fountain. That's crazy. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. I mean, I, I checked myself into the hostel. <clears throat> once or twice a week to get the shower and uh, 
and uh, a bed, you know, and not have to carry everything everywhere because, you know, it's a lot of weight, guitars and books and bags and coffee cans with digital recorders inside. You're a true adventurer. Oh, boy. And we salute you for that. that. <laughs> yeah. Right now, it's a pretty funny situation because I had these uh, boots that just uh, they gave me uh, trouble with my feet real bad because I, I cover so many miles, you know, and uh, they're just killing me. So this guy at this workplace, and the other ones, but my real people boots, my real life boots instead of work boots, shoes for crews. I um, <laughs> I just uh, I I can't wear those to here because they slip me all over the place. Slip, 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 slip. So this guy's like, I got a pair of shoes for crews that's too big for me, and I'm like ten and a half or eleven, say a pair of shoes uh, to wear, you know, U.S. size, and uh, I'll be damned. This guy didn't give me a pair of thirteens, and so these oh. damn things is the biggest pair of shoes I ever saw in my life. And the clown shoes. And then in the style of Michael Jackson shoes without the white. And I'm having trouble walking around these, but they ain't hurting my feet so bad. But boy, if they're getting just big ass clown shoes. <laughs> yeah. There, I hope they're not composite I've been, I've been, steel toe. Those are the worst hey, when they're too Ain't bad. nothing wrong with being humble beyond recognition. You know what I mean? He e Ooh, boy. I'm too well, afraid it's of time mice. To shove off, boys, and I got back in there and clean up the mess. Where are you working at now? Uh, at this place called the Listening Room. It's a, oh. it's a, one of the, one of the top uh, music venues down here. They have like all these up and coming stars and whatnot the coming listening. in here. And the guy that wrote the goddamn Rocky theme song played in here or something. I missed it. Mm-hmm. I was working cooking stuff for him. I do that and then I close down here. Get done around about eleven or midnight. Walk up to my spot. Maybe have me a tall can of Coors Original beer. Sleep on my concrete slab. From about one until about five, wake up at five, catch the bus at six, work at the Whole Foods Market from seven to three, and uh, get back into town about four thirty. Clock in back over here at five, work it again, and do that for a couple more days before I got me an evening off. Got me a library card today. <laughs> uh, you know what I ain't got? You know what I ain't got? What? Any time to use it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Well, let's you get back well, to work. Well, boys, having a nice time. It's good talking to you. And uh, it's been a while. I want to. I want to. I want to take my big goofy ass shoes back in this building and get mopping. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be back at you with some uh, some better tales. But uh, yeah, if you ever run into that guy in the dark alley. Run. <laughs> Run. Can't do it. Bye. <laughs> I, 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 what did he do? There we go. I got it. I'm kind of getting it. <laughs>